Good morning. Uh, a couple weeks back, we got ourselves a 2003 Mercury Mountaineer. This is the V8 4.6 liter version. And a couple days after we uh, started driving around, we uh, had some error codes pop up on the service engine soon light. Got the code for a bad coil pack E, which is uh, cylinder number five, and also a uh, TPS or throttle position center out of range. So today I'm going to be uh, swapping out them their parts. All right, let's go down the uh, parts that are install being installed today. Um, we have our throttle position sensor. That is a allegedly a Delphi from Amazon. Uh, there were some Chinese brands there that uh, had some mixed reviews, so I spent the extra 10 bucks and got what is hopefully a legitimate Delphi throttle position sensor. That cost me about 35 bucks, I think. Um, we got the scanner, which I have already used. Works great. This um, is what told me what the codes were. Um, we got some lubricant and anti-seize. A uh, little spark plug gap tool because I lost my last one. Um, we got eight sets, eight spark plugs. We got eight coils. The coils and spark plugs together were seventy dollars from Walmart.com. Motocraft spark plugs, hopefully Motocraft coils, but they don't seem to have any markings on them at all, so they're probably Chinesium. And most importantly, coffee. So I'm going to. Uh, spin myself around and uh, we're going to start working on this bugger. Right, so uh, here's our engine compartment obviously. Um, before even starting this job I did replace the hood shock springs um, because the hood was falling on my head. 18 bucks at Amazon. I would strongly recommend you do your uh, hood supports before you attempt any work inside your engine otherwise your 2x4 is going to fall out and your hood's going to hit you on the head. So. Um, very cheap and easy fix on those hood shocks and uh, now to get this cover off here and I, I just want to interrupt here I want to say that this is the first vehicle I have had made in this century everything else I had has been 90s or earlier so when I see an engine and I just see a black box it scares the piss out of me but to remove the black box we got a couple of screws here I believe there's a hose running through it in the back we're going to get the black box off and then we'll see what hopefully looks like a real freaking engine. All right, got the engine cover off and now we're looking at something that looks more similar to an engine here. Um, the coil that was registering as an error was coil number 5 or E on the encoder. Um, on this engine, the coils run 1 through 4 is passenger side front to back. 5 through 8 is driver side front through back. So this is a coil that's got the issue. Now, first thing I'm noticing here is this wire. Looks a little bit crimpeded. Looks like all the connections are intact because it could be the coil, it could be the wires leading to the coil. So we're gonna pop that out and we'll see if there's any um, breaks or any obstructions in that wiring and then we'll uh, pop out that there coil. Um, connectors are basically your squeeze and release type of connectors and the coil, well I'll get to the coil in a minute. This is now for our TPS. On the 8 cylinder version your TPS is right there in front. Let me put my finger on it here. That is the throttle position sensor. On the 6 cylinder version it's facing the cab. More of a pain in the butt. So that should be an easy swap out right there and we'll get to that in a minute as well and there's just a little overview shot of the engine for you all right back in a bit okay first thing i noticed here the connector for this cylinder does not click into place it just pops right off so that may be the root of our problem here um, does match the style of the other connectors which are firmly locked into place so it may have just been the uh, the clip on the connector there so um, take a look, bit closer look at that all right i screwed around with the uh, connector a little bit um, looks like there might just be some debris in there i was able to get it to kind of half catch to one of the 
new coil packs. I don't see any breakage in the wires. I pulled back some of that electrical tape. So I'm probably going to reuse this or try to reuse this instead of cutting into the harness and basically calling around and hoping somebody has this part in stock. So uh, I'm just going to plow on ahead and we're going to pull this first uh, coil pack and we'll take a look at that and the plug underneath it. All right, we have a problem and the coil pack swap out is not going to happen today. Um, this is our original coil pack. And this is the one that Walmart said fit my vehicle. Um, you can notice one is a little bit longer than the other. Uh, one has an angle, the other one does not. And looking at these from the top, that is original. And that is Walmart. So the location of the screw holes is significantly different. They may work. My main concern is the difference in the angle of the boots. Um, the, the screw hole to uh, connector thing, probably not a problem. But I think I'm going to concentrate on just doing the TPS. And I'm going to re reassemble this and I'm also going to see if I can just uh, shim or find some way to better lock up that uh, connection on coil 5. So changing gears. Alright, I did get coil pack 5 reinstalled. I have the connector so it's solid now. And first time ever installing a coil pack. Coming out it popped right out, putting it in. It was just kind of a not sure if it's really where it's supposed to be type of feeling. But um, that is back in. And now I'm going to uh, pop out and do the TPS. And if this clears both error codes, then you know, when I return the stuff to Walmart, I just might not get it back. But we'll see where it goes. And sorry, I just might as well move you over to the TPS. So this is the next part of today's adventure is uh, getting the TPS off the throttle body here. Uh, that should be a simple connector. Shouldn't need to move too much stuff out of the way. So that should be a, a fairly simple task. All right, so I got the uh, connector off the back of the TPS. That's basically push a little tab, pops right out. And it looks like the only other thing I have to move this one little uh, cable here. That was a little bit in the way, and I should be able to get the the rest of that with just a regular screwdriver. So we'll see what happens. All right, so due to space restrictions in there, I did have to use my uh, little ratchet with a P2 bit in it. Uh, old one is on top, new one is on the bottom, and um, the position of that little dial on the inside is important when you install it, and let me bring you over here and show you. And you see that little uh, screwdriver looking thing that comes out there? You want to make sure you line this up properly when you are installing it. I'm going to uh, change angles and we'll uh, take a look at that. All right, I just wanted to show you why I don't think this is a genuine Delphi part here. This is the original. You have stampings, markings, country of origin, etc. stamped on your device. This is the one that came from Amazon in a Delphi box with a sticker saying made in Mexico. Um, not All you got is one little sticker on there no molding marks so it'll probably work but pretty sure it is not a Delphi part or a Motocraft part or anything certified because it would have had some type of part number of marking on there so alright so it looks like my have overpaid for a piece of Chinese stuff but it happens let's uh, put it in see if it works all right, pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed, and certainly not wrong-handed. All right, so basically, you see your little thingy in here. You see your little pin you got to go on, which is what this thing is sensing. So when you put this thing in, you just got to go over that pin. 
All right, well, you get the idea. I ain't gonna be able to do this one-handed. All right, so it's in but not screwed in. Basically, when you put it in, you put it in straight, and then you'll just twist this to uh, line up your holes. So you don't want to line up your holes and put it on and mess up that uh, piece of throttle in there. So, all right, I'm gonna put in a couple of screws and uh, hook that connector back up. All right, uh, TPS is installed, basically, very simple install. If you have the front-facing model V6, you're going to suffer a bit more. Um, it's all connected back up. All right, and the issue with the coil pack is hopefully resolved by uh, tightening up that connector there or getting the connector to uh, clip properly. So I'm going to start it up, see if anything explodes and then probably contact Walmart and return the incorrect equipment that they sent me. Alright, um, we'll see how this thing runs. Alright, got everything back together. Seems to be idling a bit better. It's kind of hard to tell, but it uh, looks like it's quieted down a bit. So maybe those two little things will do it and I won't need to toss any more into this. I do want to do the plugs at some point in the future because it's a 20 year old rig and you know, plugs don't last that long and if I'm gonna pull all the plugs out I might as well do those coil packs so but it seems to be happy for the moment the codes are still on the dash I believe it takes about 50 miles or so for those codes to disappear so hopefully this helps you out I'm gonna end this here and start uh, get my butt in the air conditioning and start video editing Y'all have a great day. If this helped out at all, uh, please subscribe. And I do plan on having a couple more uh, small, short videos um, on uh, fixes and hacks or whatever for the uh, Mountaineer. All right, later.